Now, the Ebola virus, this is something we've been talking about in the news and it really is getting quite scary. It is a severe, often fatal illness with uh, a case fatality rate of up to 90%. Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone are countries that have been affected by this virus and it is said to be the world's deadliest outbreak so far. The UN says more than 670 people in West Africa have died of Ebola since February this year. For more on this, we are joined in studio now by Professor Janusz Paweska, who is the head of the Center for Emerging and Zoonotic Diseases at the National Institute for Communicable Diseases. Quite a mouthful, but uh, a, a, a hell of a title there. Thank you, Professor, for being with us. Good morning. And now, I, I, let me explain to viewers, because you taught me a lesson. Uh, zoonotic diseases is something that originates from animals. That's correct. Okay. Hence, Ebola. Uh, let's talk about the origins of Ebola before we talk about what's happening now. The origin of Ebola virus is still enigmatic. It hides somewhere in nature and uh, most recent study somehow highlights the possibilities where it could be. Uh, we believe that it's, it is maintained in bat populations, a very specific bat species, and then from bats is, um, we call it a kind of a spillover mechanism to other animals, including chimpanzees, gorillas, but also some forest dacres, and so forth and so forth. And then the people hunting for those animals, mm. either sick or dead, are exposed, and then how they became infected, and eventually take this virus back to their homes, to the villages, or to the hospitals, and then they become a secondary source of infection okay. to other people and then how And that's how it starts spreading. spreading yes. How do you contain it? Because that's the fear at the moment. It doesn't appear to be something that can be contained. Uh, it can be contained relatively easy, as a matter of fact. If uh, uh, control measures are well in place, I think the major problem now with this outbreak is that there is not uh, enough stuff on the ground and there is not enough people who can actually execute some of these uh, control measures. One of the control measures um, is to trace all the contact. You can imagine when one person who is infected uh, and is not showing yet any symptoms, yeah. or even if it's showing, uh, showing some symptoms, still is within the community and is uh, in direct contact with many, many people. How many, how many people you might meet a day? Yeah. 30, 40, and so forth and so forth. At least. At least. Yeah. So the problem is that if you would like to stop the chain of the transmission, you have to identify not only sick people, but also people who had the contact with those who were sick or died. And this is a tremendous task. Obviously, um, one also has to obey, obey um, uh, proper barrier nursing practices. That means uh, being uh, protected by using uh, personal protective equipment, um, gloves, uh, gowns, aprons, goggles, face, shield mask, and so forth and so forth. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, health workers are trained uh, in using those uh, equipment, but sometimes that also requires some time to be implemented and maybe there are some problem with uh, distribution of those protective equipment. Maybe there is uh, some problem actually uh, in uh, using those uh, protective equipment in an appropriate way. Even a simple task like um, gowning the glove and actually taking the glove off, people have to know exactly how to, how do, it. to do it. So it doesn't help that you put the gloves on your hands in the morning and yeah. you run with the gloves around the hospital not taking care what you've done what? with your hands. Absolutely. Because that's how we actually spread pathogens. You spread it. Well, we're seeing now that, I mean, this is, has been described as the worst Ebola outbreak ever. It uh, is. From your history? It you is indeed. The, this is the, the largest on a record. Uh, uh, I think uh, there's about now 22 or maybe even 23 uh, outbreak uh, which were caused by Ebola, recorded since the time the Ebola virus was first discovered. The Ebola virus was first discovered in 1976. Uh, so, uh, 
um, over 40 years, we've got about 22 major outbreaks, which we know of, and that one is indeed the worst one, because it's struck in West Africa, yes. which doesn't really have experience with these diseases. The previous outbreaks were in Central Africa, like Democratic, Democratic Republic of Congo, Republic of um, Congo and Gabon, uh, mostly Ebola Zaire, and uh, uh, some other outbreaks also in Sudan and Uganda, uh, which were caused by another species, Ebola Sudan. Yeah. There's, uh, there's five or maybe even now six different species of Ebola virus, and Ebola Zaire, which striked in West Africa, that one is the most fatal one. Now, 729 deaths that we are reporting this morning with, obviously, the, the, the reality that this death toll could go higher. But the, the, the good news that we've been reporting on is that the, there's a, a, a $100 million emergency joint response plan that has now been initiated. Um, how is this going to be used? I mean, obviously, there's the money, but what you're saying is some of these areas don't know how to deal with this. Are the experts going to be sent in? Are they going to help and assist? Uh, there's many exp experts already deployed by uh, WHO and other uh, international organizations uh, like Red Cross, but also Doctors Without Borders. And uh, it might be that we'll be also uh, going there and deploying the mobile app. In, uh, in uh, some South Africans? In, uh, yes, that's right. Uh, there were already a few South Africans helping this outbreak anyway. Yeah. Uh, this uh, aid is uh, very much welcome uh, because the resources are very, very limited and the uh, consumables which are used during these outbreaks are really a huge, huge amount of gowns, of gloves, uh, but also uh, we're talking about uh, probably medicines as well because, as you know, the patients, though there is no specific cure, there is no vaccine, there is no specific antivirals, so we can't really cure from this disease, but we can help uh, in um, uh, preventing the development of some of these uh, severe symptoms, or at least try to treat this uh, uh, disease symptomatically. So mm. if somebody has good diarrhea, obviously is giving the anti drugs. If somebody has got fever, is getting some antiparexic drugs. But people also develop some neuro, neuro uh, psychotic symptoms. So obviously people are uh, given some sedative and so forth and so forth. Yeah. So it's um, so it's plenty of resources needed uh, on the ground because you can imagine that people who uh, were in contact and they would have to be traced, then they have to be monitored for a period of 21 days. The temperature is monitored for 21 days. Yeah. So to execute this task is also uh, not easy. Yeah. Obviously, the, the, uh, the, the petrol is quite expensive. Running the hospital is very expensive. Uh, and. Um, it's it's very overwhelming task because yeah, uh, the number of contacts is probably uh, much much higher than the number of people who are reported uh, to be sick. My question to you now is just finally, uh, just to, to to wrap up South Africa. Are we at risk? Um, you know, I mean, we've we've got so many of our our neighbouring countries and and citizens coming into the country. Um, could they bring it in? Is there a fear? Many people are worried and talking about this. Um, almost the entire world is on alert. Uh, we are now a global village, so obviously it can happen that somebody can sneak in. But uh, there are a number of measures in place to prevent it. Uh, first of all, it's very unlikely that very sick people will be um, allowed to board uh, on a plane uh, at the departure point. And obviously there is also a screening at the arrival. As you might remember, if you go through the passport control at this place, there is a, a, we, what is done is a temperature monitoring. Yes. So everybody uh, is actually it's monitored, monitored for possible increase in body temperature and those people will be taken aside and interviewed. Yeah. Not everyone coming from this part of Africa is infected. Okay? One has to put this in a context. What these people were doing in the last 21 days, were they really exposed to sick people, were they attending burials, were they taking, you know, for example, care of uh, um, sick people or dead people. So 
uh, after this interview, uh, eventually the decision is made what to do with which, uh, which, uh, um, such as you know, uh, uh, travelers. Okay. South oh. Africa is well prepared. I think that was emphasized on the many occasions. For us, uh, viral hemorrhagic fevers, because Ebola virus um, is grouped with many other virus, viruses, uh, as uh, agents which are causing viral hemorrhagic fever syndrome. We do have our own endemic viruses in this country which also cause viral hemorrhagic fevers. We also had uh, in the past uh, uh, some importation of viral hemorrhagic fevers in this country. 1996, we had Ebola importation in this country. We had also importation of Lassa fever from West Africa, which can display almost the same symptoms as Ebola virus. Sure. So we do have yeah. trained epidemiologists, we do have trained uh, clinicians, Good. but first of all we also have one uh, of the best uh, laboratory infrastructure to make a diagnosis of patients. Uh, this is and the biosafety level 4 which is situated very close from your studio okay. at Sandingham. Uh, that's the only a biosecurity laboratory on this uh, on this continent. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. But thank you so much for coming in and talking about this. It's a it's a huge story around the world. As you heard, the world is on on alert at this point, where we are seeing the worst outbreak of Ebola ever in the history of uh, of this particular virus. Uh, speaking to us about this is Professor uh, uh, Janusz Pawlowski, who is the head of for the Center of Emerging and Zoonotic Diseases. Thank you very very much for joining us on the program. All right, well that